Today in the program, exquisite sweets from chocolate from Lviv confectioners. Why does the western capital of Ukraine have its own chocolate tradition? How did one tray with sweets turn into a network of workshops where candies are made for European monarchs? The Master of Crafts program went to where the chocolate is poured like a river every day, the charming European city of Lviv. National cuisine always becomes a part of culture. It is hard to imagine Americans without their favorite burgers, milkshakes and barbecues. Italians are proud of their spaghetti and pizza. In the Middle East, guests must be treated with hummus, falafel and kebab. However, over the past hundred years, there was such a large-scale interpretation of culinary cultures that in the United States they consider pizza and Italian varieties of coffee as their own products, not to mention oriental dishes that can be tasted in Rome, New York and Kiev. Ukraine as a rule is associated with borscht, salo, pig fat and vareniki with various fillings. Each region can have its own characteristics. For example, in the south, thanks to the Crimean Tatars, there are Asian chebureki and yantik. However, throughout Ukraine, there is nothing like the tradition that has developed in the West. Here they like special chocolate sweets to go with coffee. Lviv, this historic European city, became the confectionery center of Ukraine. And it's not just about factories that mass-produce chocolate bars, but about small confectionery workshops where various handmade sweets are born. Chocolate is treated here almost like a precious metal. Lviv tour guides are highly qualified and will gladly tell tourists about their chocolate. When caravans came to Europe from afar and brought chocolate, not everyone could taste it. Lviv stands at the crossroads of trade routes from the east, from the west, from the north and from the south. Here there were always enough eastern spices and silks, so residents of Lviv have enjoyed chocolate for centuries along with all of Europe. There is even a special word – chocolada. This is what hot chocolate is called, first of all, but all other varieties too. Lavivans like this delicacy so much that they had a desire to eat it almost every day. But a serious question arose – how can one eat sweets during the Christian fasting period? Lent? This question was studied by the Papal Chancery. The Pope himself was given a chocolate to taste. But not a sweet bar like now, but a real bitter one made with coca beans. The Pope said, you can always eat such muck. He did not like the taste of bitter chocolate. If the pontiff arrived in Lviv today, he would have definitely found chocolate to his taste. And most likely, that would make a candy or a bar with a unique taste especially for such an honored guest. One of the local chocolate workshops already has the experience of creating sweets for monarchs. How do hundreds of different flavors grow from chocolate grains? What is the skill of working with chocolate? And how are candies born worthy of the royal core? Watch next in the program. The founders of the new chocolate wave in Lviv are Volodymyr and Natalia Dubovi. One time they tried high-quality Dutch chocolate and decided that they would make their own. Books, masterclasses, the internet. Very soon they made their first handmade sweets and began to sell them from the tray directly on the streets of Lviv. How it's done? I did not dare to do anything for a long time. Then I found real Belgian chocolate, with which we're still working today. The first time I tempered the chocolate in our home kitchen, mind you, in an insuitable dishes. Some came out well, while others did not. The first chocolates were in the form of coffee beans with a coffee nut filling. My husband tasted them and said, it's absolutely delicious. After the first success, the couple managed to rent the first floor of this historic building in the very center of Lviv and open a shop. A few years ago, Volodymyr passed away and Natalia completely managed the business on her own. Now she prefers to be a non-public person. But at the same time, she takes part in the life of such chocolate workshops all over Ukraine. The task of their founders was to create not just a business, but also an environment in which the talents of Ukrainian confectionery specialists can be realized. Dozens of young specialists from all over the country work here today. Я ніколи не думала, що я буду працювати в на шоколадній фабриці, але я завжди з I never thought that I would work at a chocolate factory. But since childhood, I've been fond of pastries and very often I bake different cookies. So I ended up choosing the profession of engineer technologist. Я обрала професію інженер-технолог. 
In my childhood, I could not even dream of working in a workshop where chocolate would be poured in tons right out of the tap. <laughs> Both Olha and Yevhen have a culinary education, but they mastered the virtuoso treatment of chocolate only here. They work in the same first workshop in the center of Lviv. How it's done. The chocolate raw materials come from overseas just like hundreds of years ago, but they are processed in the best factories in Europe. Coca beans are unsuitable for cooking. We use European chocolate, specifically from Belgium. It's a high-end product. It comes to us in the form of drops. There are milk, black, white and caramel. We melt and temper them. After that, the chocolate is ready for casting into molds or for covering the candy. Drops are literally droplets or grains of chocolate. They need not just melt into working mass, but to temper, that is to heat up to 45 to 50 degrees and then abruptly cool to 31 to 34 degrees. The purpose of this process is the crystallization of coca butter. It goes into a stable state. If the chocolate does not temper, it will quickly melt and after a while will be covered with a familiar white coating. And it will not be as plastic and delicious as a chocolatier standards require. In the process of this heat treatment, the chocolate gets brittle, shiny, gets the best taste, and the figure that we pour is well separated from the shape. After tampering, Yevhen can do just about anything with chocolate, but mostly he pours molds of food polycarbonate. If we're talking about hollow figures of chocolate, then one filling is not enough. After the first cooling, they are always poured for the second time, thereby adding a layer for their strength. On our showcases, you can see chocolates, sweets and figurines. All of them are unique in their own way, because chocolatiers make them the way I do. Today, Yevhen has a fleet of vehicles in production and also portions of hot milk chocolate on a stick. This does not mean that liquid coca is magically preserved inside. This will only happen if the chocolate is dropped into hot milk and stirred. Yevhen and his colleagues are doing everything so quickly that it seems like it's very simple. As a matter of fact, every chocolatier here goes through his own school. This skill has been polished for years. We constantly learn something new and every month we discover something for ourselves. For example, we learn how to temper the chocolate and how to fill this or that mold. If someone new joins our team, they are not immediately allowed to do what is required of them. European confectioners often come here to give master classes. They also give advice on the most difficult part of the chocolate making craft, namely the art of making sweets. Technologist Olha is one of those who can be called the inventors of new tastes. Ideas for sweets always come, let's say, from outer space, perhaps. Seriously, I'm mostly inspired by Belgian and French chocolate. I also study the science of combining tastes and then I combine them in practice. Somewhere in Lviv there is a special secret shop where Olha can come at any moment and prepare an experimental candy. She often focuses on the taste of local gourmet. Ukrainians traditionally like the combination of chocolate with our favorite fruits – strawberries, cherries, prunes, as well as oranges. In addition, Lviv is famous for coffee, so we have a lot of recipes with chocolate, coffee, cinnamon and other spices like red or black pepper. If the experiment is successful, a technologist, together with his or her creation, appears before a tasting commission, which Natalia Dubova is a member of. Olha says that if a new suite is turned down, then it is mostly because of the difficulties in production. From the point of view of commerce, 
local sweets have one major drawback. We use only natural ingredients, so that candy with chocolate creamy cases has a shelf life of no more than 25 days, and in the nut brittles it is two months. Anyway, this is a very short shelf life due to the natural raw materials. Now the workshop constantly produces more than 100 kinds of various sweets. Olha has created at least a few dozen of them, although she has long been out of account. One of the most common sweets in the chocolate making industry is marzipan candy. Ready marzipan is mixed with different ingredients. It can be nuts, various fruit pastes or coffee beans. It all blends into a homogeneous mass and it is cut on the guitar and then it is covered with chocolate on top. Musical instruments have nothing to do with it. A confectioner's guitar is a machine that cuts stuffing, bars and so on using a grid of strings. Alice, the Lviv masters of chocolate, do not allow strangers to enter their factory. They protect their secrets of delicate production and recipes of some sweets from strangers, especially if they're intended for those of royal blood. Most recently, Olha had a real test to defend the honor of all Ukrainian confectioners before the monarchs of a European country with centuries-old chocolate traditions. The Belgian queen Matilda had a reception for 500 people and we were tasked to come up with an unusual candy from Ukraine. I had a very little time, only two days, but I found the time. It was a special taste, a mix of uncombinable ingredients, beets and black chocolate. In the end, everyone liked the candy. The success of Lviv chocolatiers at this level suggests that Ukraine, beyond all doubt, formed its own chocolate school. However, in the country so far, there are no confectionery schools that would prepare chocolatiers in such a narrow sphere. Therefore, Lviv masters take part of the educational work on themselves and arrange chocolate masterclasses in several cities throughout the country, especially for children at the request of parents. Sometimes they become charitable, so there was a candy called make your dream come true. This candy was a chocolate cream filling with a caramel flavor. We designed it for a boy named Bogdan Nestorenko, who is suffering from cancer. He painted a clover and dreamed of making chocolate sweets with this image. Our chocolatiers had a master class with him and created the very candy, calling it Make Your Dream Come True. The proceeds from the sale of this candy go to the treatment and fulfillment of the dreams of Ukrainian cancer patients. For adult chocolatiers from all over the country, Lviv craftsmen annually hold the Chocolate Plenary. This is not just a competition for making candies or chocolate bars, but a full-fledged art competition. Chocolate in this competition replaces paints and even material for engravings. It was this idea that the Dubovi couple applied to their own business. Chocolate should be a material for creativity and manual work, not factory reproduction. The most important thing in any chocolate product is that a person puts his or her heart and soul into it. It is not made by a machine. Every figure or bar was in the hands of a chocolatier. I fell in love with this business. I see myself in the future in this profession and I want to develop Ukrainian chocolate art. This inspired Lviv people proved that Ukrainian chocolate someday will surely stand side by side with the Swiss, Belgian and Dutch. It's just a matter of time. After all, they already have the necessary skills and creative talent.